Okay, I believe the recording is happening. So thank you all for joining. It's 12 o'clock, 12.01 now. And my name is Ryan Patterson. I'm the public art project manager and I'm gonna get us started, but... Um, I will introduce my colleagues as we begin. Or I guess we can save that for the introductions. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so let's get started. Thanks for everybody who's joined us so far. So just a couple of housekeeping and um, um, orientation slides. Please mute your device if you're not speaking. Please do not present your screen during the presentation. We will have a chance for question and answer throughout the presentation. I'm sharing our Maryland State Arts Council's equity and justice statement. The arts celebrate our state's diversity, connect our shared humanity and transform individuals and communities. The Maryland State Arts Council and its supporting collaborators are committed to advancing and modeling equity, diversity, accessibility, and inclusion in all aspects of our organizations and across communities of our state. MSAC and its grantees are committed to embracing equity and non-discrimination regardless of race, religious creed, color, age, gender, expression, sexual orientation, class, language, and or ability. Our vision and mission statements. The Maryland State Arts Council plays an essential role ensuring every person has access to the transformative power of the arts. The Maryland State Arts Council's goals are, include increased participation, provide intentional support, build capacity, leverage connections, Bolster Maryland Arts. In our creative meeting actions, we will have time for Q&A, so please keep these in mind as we open up for discussion. Celebrate being in the space with other creative people, engage with everyone's presence as a gift, acknowledge that everyone uh, knows a lot, enter the conversation with curiosity and inquiry, share your idea and trust that it will be heard, Use I statements, focus your language on the task at hand, hold one another accountable with care, apply yes and, I hear your idea and I'm going to add to it, and balance speaking and listening. And when you do speak, please introduce yourself by name and let us know if you have a preferred pronoun you would like us to use. So with all that, um, I would like us to begin. I'm so pleased that you all could join us on a Friday afternoon. And again, this session is being recorded to live on our website. Uh, we will begin with a little bit of introduction around our program and uh, the background on our Public Art Across Maryland uh, Commission's program. We will go into the specifics of um, our upcoming projects and how to apply to them. And there will be question and answer opportunities throughout the presentation. So I'd like to begin by introducing my colleagues, Lisa Fenner. Hi, everybody. Uh, I know many of you, so great to see you on the call today. And I direct the public art program. Rosa. Hello, everyone. My name is Rosa. Um, I'm a project assistant. And again, I'm Ryan Patterson, the public art project manager. Um, it's, it's great to have you all here. We work as a team, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us about um, any ideas you have or questions about these specific projects. So we're gonna begin with an overview of our Public Art Across Maryland Artwork Commissions program. You may have heard us in, uh, if you're familiar with our program, you may have heard it referred to as the Maryland Public Art Initiative in the past. We've recently aligned all of our public art programs under the Public Art Across Maryland title and Artwork Commissions is the work we do uh, on behalf of the state uh, buildings um, and capital development program. So the Public Art Across Maryland Artwork Commissions program is the state's percent for art program. Some of you might be familiar with that percent for art term. So for all renovated uh, and new state-owned buildings, 
a percentage of the construction budget is set aside for public artwork. Artists apply for these projects through an open call process and are selected by an artist selection committee. We're gonna go over what that process looks like. But we'd like to start with showing you a few of the commission works we have across Maryland so far. Um, one of our first projects was Forum at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County by Thomas Sayer. It's an earth casting. Uh, so it's rammed earth cast into these forms and creating an outdoor common space. Stochastic interactions was unveiled in 2018 at the University of Maryland Baltimore campus. It's a kinetic work that uh, sits in front of the building along Baltimore Street. In Flight by Volkan Alkanoglu is at the UMBC Interdisciplinary Life Sciences Building, and it is, um, uh, um, as Lisa likes to call it, two and a half dimensions. It comes off the wall as a relief sculpture, and it's um, painted aluminum elements that are installed along three different panels. So you can see it's not just in front of these um, students here, but it goes throughout this building. And the uh, Piney Branch Water Garden by Michael Singer Studios was unveiled at the, US, the University of Shady Grove's Biomedical Sciences and Engineering and Education Building. Uh, this picture shows the water garden with the sculptural elements, which are made of cast concrete and aluminum panels, but they um, do not have the plants installed yet. So this happened just before uh, the pandemic last year, and we had not gotten a photo of the, the full landscaping um, of plants and lilies installed throughout this water garden. The second half of this piece occurs within the building with our cast aluminum panels set into a living green wall in this um, uh, gathering um, stepped terraced uh, um, common space. And the final example we'd like to show is Always Ready, which is a two-dimensional work that was uh, created at a smaller scale for the Maryland National Guard's Eastern Readiness Center, and then enlarged to a mural size scale uh, and visible within the building. And it depicts the service of um, the Maryland National Guard uh, members um, um, throughout conflicts and um, in service to citizens of Maryland. And of course there's projects in development, right? So there's those were, I think, five projects that we have out, but um, we're here today to talk about the Cadensville District Courthouse and the Salisbury Animal Health Lab. We have recently selected artists for the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and Coppin State University, and we hope to announce that soon. And in upcoming, we have a number of university projects uh, that we're really excited to launch probably later this summer. So we're going to do a general overview of the application process. And then we'll go into specifics about each of the buildings uh, that we're here to talk about today. So just a general overview. Um, every project, when a new building is created or a facility is going to have a piece of public art, we develop a specific artist selection committee, which is made up of a number of members. Uh, this example shows members from the state agency that would be commissioning the work, the building administration, in this case, we're talking about a courthouse today, so the administrator may be the administrative judge. Building staff, maybe someone who works in the building. Um, if it was a university, that might be a professor. In this case, it may be um, someone who um, does uh, services to the people who come in and out of the facility um, or work in a bursar's office. We always include members of the design team, uh, the architects and landscape architects, depending on uh, where the project will be located, um, a local artist or artist stakeholder, someone from the local arts council maybe. Um, the Maryland Public Art Commission is a state appointed commission to oversee the public art across Maryland program. And members of the community who live nearby or will be accessing the facility. Uh, Liesl, Rosa and myself, and sometimes a construction project manager are part of this team, but we are non-voting members. We help administer the process and work with artists who are applying. So this team collectively will, will develop things like themes and goals and um, guiding principles around the artwork 
that you would see listed in the request for qualifications. The process for artists like yourself to apply will be to read the call for artists or the RFQ document, which is posted on our website. You apply online and you submit in your statement of interest, your resume and work samples. We do not ask you to provide any new artwork proposals. We don't want to know the sculpture or the mural you want to make for this building. We want to see what you've done in the past, how you've worked with other clients or collaborated on other similar projects. And then that team that we talked about, the committee, will review the applications that come in and in some cases will uh, score the applications to develop a list of semi-finalists. Those semi-finalists will then be asked to develop proposals. I want to go into a little bit of the detail around those three elements we asked for. When we ask for a statement of interest, please explain, use this time to explain why you or your team are, are applying for this particular project. Uh, sometimes we see applicants submit a standard form of maybe like an artist statement, or a mission statement of what they do, but it doesn't go into the detail of what they feel like they're bringing to this project. The statement of interest is really an opportunity for you and your team to describe why you're interested in, in this example, maybe the courthouse um, or the Salisbury Animal Health Lab. Why does it speak to you? Why are you interested in this particular opportunity to create work at this location? Use your resume uh, to share experience that you've had creating other projects, collaborating with other teams, installing artwork, even if you're the, essentially the client, it's a self-initiated project, you can list it as a relevant experience. We want to see that you've taken the opportunity to work within a budget and develop artworks before. And then a note about your work samples. Again, these should be existing works. They do not have to be public art commissions, but if they are, we want to know who they were commissioned for, when they were installed, what the budget was. Um, we want to know the dimensions and the materials and the media that you used. Uh, we don't assume, be, if you leave that area blank, we don't assume that um, what the material is, you know, or what the scale is. We can't just guess that. So please include it in the metadata area of, or in the artwork description area of the application. And uh, one final note is to really keep it um, clear to one image per slide when you're including your work samples. Uh, we do not want to see four or five pictures of one artwork collaged into a single JPEG. That gets confusing, and um, most, uh, really all of our uh, review is happening on computers and digital screens at this point, and we can't control the scale that someone's looking at it. So if you crowd in multiple pictures, it could be very difficult for them to, to parse out. You want to present your work as clearly as possible with a single image. Just going into the process a little further. So once that artist selection committee, based on those elements we just talked about, selects a series of semifinalists that they think would be great candidates for the project, those semifinalists are invited to create proposals. That's where you'll really speak to what you would make for this project. You can develop a proposal, talk about the scope, how it'll be built, what the materials are, and a proposed timeline of installing it, and then uh, each of these semifinalists are interviewed and given a chance to present that, that proposal. A finalist is selected, and then you go under contract to create your work. We understand there may be changes from that initial proposal process, so you'll have time to go into further development, get re, you know, get deeper into your budget, talk about who you may contract with. Uh, but this um, phase helps us to establish kind of where you would go with the project if awarded. Are there any general questions about this overview? Feel free to unmute or put a question in the chat. OK, I'm going to keep going. So let's get into the details on these new projects. This is probably why you're here, and we are excited to talk about them. The Cadensville District Courthouse is a new courthouse on the western side of Baltimore County. It is very close to um, the Security Square Mall, 
or the intersection of I-70 and 695, if you're if you are familiar with the area. These are some earlier renderings by the architect team as you approach the courthouse off of Rolling Road. And then as you come around to the front of the courthouse, um, you know, you can see this large curtain glass window and the walks that would lead you up to the building. And the building is built, it's it, it's existing. So the challenge here may be for the, the artists that will be working into a functioning courthouse that is, is open for business. Here, here it is built in a similar view and around the front, that curtain glass wall at the entry. Also take note of these stones that are incorporated into the landscaping. So this project has a, has a budget that uh, we have divided into three separate art opportunities. $150,000 will go towards an all-inclusive commission for the interior lobby when you enter. $50,000 is set aside for an all-inclusive contract for a muralist to install work on the second floor. This does not have to be a traditional mural, but would need to be a um, flat two-dimensional work that can be installed on the wall. And $8,000 is put aside for a writer's fee, specifically to commission a literary artist to create an original poetic work that will be engraved in those stones I talked about. I'm going to go through these three sites in order. So as you enter, this would be going right through the front doors of that glass curtain wall. You come to a security stand. Above this security desk, let me see if I can bring a pointer up. Can you all see my mouse moving? Not really. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we can see it. Okay. So there's a security desk and a series of monitors that display courtroom uh, assignments. And this wall space above the monitors is the area for the $150,000 commission location. Here it is again with a kind of a rough outline of where that, that artwork could be located. So again, this building is open and functioning. These, these um, gray porcelain tiles are installed on the wall. And um, if an artist were selected, they could negotiate about um, whether an artwork would be installed through them or some tiles may be removed, um, but that will be developed further down the line. Here's another perspective uh, looking from that balcony you saw in the last image again above the monitors and back towards the front entrance of the building. So it's a very large area that's vi visible as people enter as well as exit down the main stairwell. As we move upstairs, uh, the, the um, building comes to these lobby, these um, kind of entry hallways and courtrooms or service stations over here on the right and then there are hallways that go down the length of the building. Just past this is where you would find this second floor hallway at the end of the, um, again, at the end of the second floor, adjacent to a legal services self-help center. And that area has been set aside for the mural artwork. Um, this is an area where clients um, people going to court, people may stop and wait as someone um, goes into the self-help center, pays court fees. Someone may have a short meeting with their artist, or I'm sorry, with their lawyer. Uh, but but it is, while it's quiet here because everything has been working remotely, we expect it to be a, a, pretty, um, a pretty busy uh, area of the building. Hi, Ryan. Yes. Um, can you explain that the the scale of the lobby lobby wall? Um, Just approximately. You know, I yeah, yes, it's, it's uh, thirteen <laughs> feet by thirty two feet. Yeah, you want to just quickly go back. Yes, here we go. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thir thirteen tall, thirty two feet wide. Thirty two. And it should be emphasized that if if an artwork were had relief, um, we would be working with the engineers in terms of the loads, what that wall can hold, but there can be nothing suspended from the ceiling. 
So that's, uh, they don't want to interfere with the architecture of the ceiling. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yeah, didn't mean to interrupt, but we got the question from the chat. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And I, I know the measurements are in the RFQ. Um, but I think this hallway is about 50 feet long. But double check <laughs> as I'm going. Okay, moving on to outside, again, those stones. This is about the literary um, commission. And this is unique. We don't, we haven't had an example where we've, carved out an opportunity specifically for a writer. And so in this case, the writer is only creating uh, the written artwork. They are not being asked to do any of the contracting for the installation of the work. So as we enter the building, this was an early shot. Please excuse this um, tree that was straightened out later. But you can see that these stones are spread throughout the entrance. And they really, um, as you walk by them, they are quite visible and they have a lot of faces that um, are nice flat faces that face uh, pedestrians. Um, and they are indigenous granite to this area that were um, dug on site when they were developing the, the location. So the proposal here is that these stone faces as, as they face people entering and exiting the building can carry a message. And so just as we see in these examples where um, even on a naturalistic stone surface, um, you know, writing has been carved quite eloquently and clearly. Um, the writer would develop a piece of writing for this building. The writing could be larger than there actually is space outside, but there would be room for approximately 200 characters to be um, composed and installed as a, a experiential poem as you walk into this building. We've already been um, estimating some of these locations and figuring out where the writing could go. Uh, and the poet would have an opportunity to um, work with a contractor on laying out the writing, but they do not, again, have the responsibility of subcontracting the engraver or carrying any of the installation um, um, work. Again, some of these stone faces are, are shown here. So the $8,000 covers the, the writer's time for creating the work, um, helping with the development and the layout, and then we would ask that they perform the work uh, on site at the dedication. But another um, have been set aside to yep. pay for the installation. Right. Jerry, did you want to say something? Oh, sorry, no. Okay. Thank One more view of the stones. Something put on these stones. Don't they do anything. The words worth eight thousand dollars. Poetry, but it has to have. So, a couple of notes on Cadenceville. Uh, the one more time, the visual art commissions are all inclusive. Uh, and the artist will be responsible for all costs associated with the design, creation, and installation. The literary commission is only a writer's fee to create the writing and participate in the layout process, not to install or engrave the writing. The visual art commissions will include a semi-finalist process, but the literary art commission will not. Literary artists are asked to submit work samples and a literary review committee will whittle that group down to um, a recommended list uh, that, that um, one artist will be selected from. So for all of our projects, you will apply at publicartist.org. I want to show that quickly. I'm going to need to represent. So here is publicartist.org.
the same sections we talked about, a letter of interest, a resume, you can either paste in or upload as a PDF, and the artwork samples. You will upload an art, your visual artwork sample and then include your information next to it. If you are applying as a literary artist, you will have to upload at least one JPEG. That does not have to, that, that is, is, is just a requirement, but that is not representative of your writing samples. If you are applying for the writing portion, please come to the bottom of the application and click on these additional writing sample, either as a PDF, a single PDF document, or if you want to submit performed examples of your writing, you can upload a video. And you should indicate in the statement of interest area if that if you are applying as a literary artist. And don't forget to hit save. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can go back in and edit and add more to your uh, application. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. So any questions about that section? Okay, are we safe to move on to Salisbury? Let's do it. Okay, I can't see the participants right now, so please. Oh, sure. Um, so the Maryland Department of Agriculture's Salisbury Animal Health Laboratory is a unique facility on Maryland's Eastern shore, just outside of Salisbury on the west side of um, the Salisbury area. Um, this building is a this is a rendering of the new building, which replaces a very um, outdated small facility that's currently located right over here um, to the what it would be the right of it on Nanty Coke Road. Uh, this area is um, kind of a busy a busy commuting corridor, both for rural and agricultural use, but it's also a growing area where there's a lot of um, um, residential subdivisions being developed. So it's, it's passed by frequently. And this facility is very important to Maryland's um, agriculture work and especially um, chicken farming and livestock health across the Eastern shore and actually the entire Delmarva. So um, farmers and, um, and uh, livestock um, industry folks bring samples from their farms to this uh, facility, which are checked for health. And um, it really monitors the health of flocks and farm animals um, in the whole area. They also provide services for the Salisbury Zoo. They perform services for, I think, um, some of uh, um, Northern uh, Virginia on the Eastern shore and, and Southern Delaware as well. Uh, so it'll be visited frequently and passed by re by residents on a regular basis. This calls uh, open. It has um, two locations to choose from. We are. I want to be very clear. We are not asking artists to make work for both locations. It's we've just decided to keep it open uh, so that artists can tell us what they would <coughs> what they would bring to this project for either location. Location one would be an exterior work that is probably uh, situated in this turnaround median area. So kind of a uh, traditional standalone sculpture on the outside of the building uh, in this high visibility um, median. And there has uh, been conduit run out to this location to accommodate potential lighting or, oops, lighting or data needs. Uh, but, um, it's, it's uh, you know, a pretty straightforward, uh, high visible space right out front. Oh, and the budget for this project is $70,000 for either location. Again, a second view of that first location. The second location is an interior conference room uh, that is visible to everyone who's entering. So I'm gonna go back a slide. If you enter through the main doors into the lobby area, you would look through a glass curtain wall, uh, where my mouse is pointing here, into a conference room. 
And there's a wall that is um, approximately 39 feet long and then uh, wraps around to a 28 foot long wall. I mean, you know, I think we have to be conscious of the doors and there's like a little um, uh, kitchenette nook in here. But uh, the main visibility is kind of in this L. And uh, we were pointed out that this room will often hold large gatherings and trainings for regional farmers. It may also host uh, public meetings or um, special uh, gatherings for uh, state employees when they're in this area because it is a state-owned building. It can be accommodated for all sorts of state uses, not just um, not just Maryland Department of Agriculture. And um, could be a, a, an area that um, employees and um, industry professionals come to on a regular basis. Here's an elevation of that wall. Again, the, there's kind of a kitchen nook here, and then the main wall is about 35 feet long and approximately 10 feet tall. So it's a, it's a large area. This uh, rendering shows that there are acoustical uh, acoustical panels set into the wall right now, and uh, those would be adjusted if we selected an artist to um, that wanted to work on the inside. And again, you would apply on publicartist.org. Please use the letter of interest area to indicate if you're per applying for a specific location. Any questions about Salisbury? For that uh, wall, Sorry, this is Anthony Glander. Um, for that wall that goes into the conference area, what type of artwork are you considering? It's it's a, um, wide open for two dimensional works that could go inside, but I think you want you know we we expect that the work would be um, original and unique for this space. So um, one person had asked in email if you know, photography could be accommodated. And I think absolutely, as long as you are planning to present it in a way that is a unique public art installation, um, as opposed to, you know, we're, we wouldn't be purchasing pre-existing prints of art, of, of photographs. It could be a mural, it could, I mean, there's a lot of options. And there are themes and goals outlined in the RFQ that speak to, um, not only the work being done, but the real um, history of um, agriculture along the Eastern Shore and the kind of honor of the small farmer uh, that is has been a part of that community. Ryan, there was a question about the height of floor to ceiling in that room for the, the two-dimensional art. If you could go back to slide 51. Yes. It's... Um, not exact, but I am guessing it's probably around uh, 15 to 16 feet. It's probably like a standard room plus a half floor uh, because this is um, this room is is kicked out from the uh, main part of the lab building. But um, the final the semifinalists would have a meeting with the architects and we would go through all the architectural plans and dimensions and all of these plans are also in the rfq to download from our website yeah i, I support that okay issue. and uh damaris morgan asks is the 70k an all-inclusive contract yes um, so all inclusive means this is your fee. It's all the fabrication costs. Um, any subcontractors that you would hire to install the work, um, insurance, any travel of the artwork to the site. Um, all of that again is, is listed in the RFQ. So great question. And then how will the selection committee decide between an inside or outside proposal? And um, that's a great question. Um, we want to see some creative ideas and we thought perhaps we'd expand um, beyond just one site uh, to consider um, 
uh, either an interior area or an exterior area. So it's actually opening the possibility for 2D and 3D artists. So um, the criteria uh, for the proposals um, uh, is listed in the RFQ. So it does have to do with appropriateness to site and um, and the the originality of, of the artwork design. So that's again, all detailed in the RFQ. Yeah. Um, and then will more than three artists be selected to present? I think we're expecting to, sorry, Lisa, did you want to say something? Yeah, go, you take it. I think we're expecting to select four semifinalists for this project. And it, they would be selected based on previous work samples and people that, um, the commission, the committee is very interested in um, seeing develop a proposal. So the insurance requirements um, for any state project are listed in our standard contract, which we'd be happy to share. Um, you, the artists will be contracting with the state agency that's building the building, not with the Maryland State Arts Council. We do track the project with you um, so we'll be, you know, providing technical assistance along the way, but the state has, I believe it's a, um, a policy of uh, $1 million that's required an artist carry. Any additional questions? Yeah, so okay. someone's asking if you're applying both for the courthouse in Salisbury, um, is it one or two applications? They are separate because they're separate artist selection committees. It's entirely different panels. And again, so let me, you know, yeah. Let me show our web page for a sec. Oh, that'd be great. So I'm going to put this link directly in the chat. If you go to this page, it lists, but as you can see here, both projects are listed. And if you click either one of these links, it downloads a PDF that gives you a lot more of the detail, themes, and goals around each project. Any other questions? We have plenty of time. I went a lot faster than I think than we thought. Uh, yes, does Catherine. The artist, yeah, the artist does need to include a line item for their insurance in the budget um, if you were submitting a proposal, if you were selected as a semifinalist. And again, the semifinalists, we would have a on-site meeting to uh, check out the site, um, to especially the Catonsville project since it's built, um, and a meeting with the architects uh, to go over all the plans and all the details of what would be required in your proposal. Thomas, we can't talk about those, those upcoming projects yet. Uh, they are under development with the Artist Selection Committee. And I expect that we will put the RFQs uh, out as we put these out uh, later this summer. Ryan, what date are these proposals due? Thank you. These proposal, the, the application for both Cadenceville and the Salisbury Animal Health Lab are due on June 7th at 3 p.m. And start your application now on publicartist.org. It's free to set up your own account. Again, just uh, you know, hit save um, with any information you start with. Uh, it's a great site also to look at other public art opportunities across the country. Um, I encourage all artists in Maryland to apply for projects out of state. That's how we build our portfolio and uh, expand our range of uh, work. So um, it's a great site to, to look at other opportunities. 
Oh yeah, that's a great question, Nancy. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, you want to take that about um, the installation process? Yeah. So this is the case for both of these facilities. I should have I should have elaborated on that more. Um, both of these buildings, Cadenceville, as you saw, is is complete. And the lab is also under construction and would probably be near completion by the time the artwork is, is really developed. So both of those instances, if a 2D artwork or mural were being proposed, it should be something that can be created uh, offsite, you know, in your studio and transported and installed by you and a team or a professional installation team. But that is to say you would not be able to work on site, say set up in the hallway, painting the mural or be in the conference room, painting art on the wall. The artwork should be on a, a panel of some kind that is resilient for this location, but can be transported in and installed. And there would be time to discuss with the team if, if you were selected and got to that semi-finalist phase, there would be opportunity to discuss, you know, what panels would, would work, if the artwork's created physically on the panel, or is it um, perhaps digitally transferred or printed into a architectural panel. There are a lot of options there, but it would okay. not be created by you on hand at that building. And it could be multiple components, mm -hmm. not necessarily the traditional notion of a panel but creating a two-dimensional uh, installation. Um, yeah. As Mercedes asks if um, there's a set-aside opportunity for small businesses and minority businesses. So um, the public art program is exempt from the standard vendor procurement of the state of Maryland. So uh, we don't um, require the registration of uh, minority and women business um, entities any artist can apply from across the United States to this opportunity. And we do not keep recommended installation companies uh, a list at this point, but uh, we could uh, probably point you to, to other um, services or people who've worked with installers that may have a recommendation. If we are, please continue to, to um, share questions as they come up. Uh, but also we know that sometimes, you know, you're taking in a lot of information today and you may want to think about it and come back. So if that's the case, do not hesitate to reach out to any of us. I will put my email down below. Also on those requests for qualifications documents. We also recommend that you have someone else read your application, like read your statement of interest, um, read your resume. Keep in mind that as we reviewed in the previous slides, there are non-arts professionals on the panel and they do not necessarily understand or have familiarity with um, standard art terms. And so make sure that uh, a non-arts person understands your application um, before you hit submit uh, because we want to make these as accessible to um, everyone on the panel and uh, advance your your application to the final stage uh, back to mercedes point around um a set aside opportunity uh, Liesl's um, comment around, you know, we are not um, setting aside any percent like for a requirement for um, um, for a small business or minority business. But I do want to point out that there's an intention when, a com when the committees decide to break up. Sorry, I will go back to. For example, at Cadenceville, where you can, you know, we shared that the budget was broken into multiple opportunities, that part of the intention of doing that is to, here, is to um, 
try to spread out more opportunities to more artists of different backgrounds, of different styles and working conditions. So if, you know, we want to see opportunities for writers, poets, literary artists, and you may not have the experience of, you know, commissioning a stonemason to engrave your work. So that we tried to create this as a kind of um, a smaller bar of being in, of being able to apply because you don't need to show experience of that kind of contract or um, the mural commission um, again is a smaller amount so if you have not received multi hundred thousand dollar commissions before you can um, you know show that that you'd be eligible for these Oh, it's great to see all the comments. Thank you, everybody. Any further reflection on just how this meeting went, if we can improve anything? So do check out the RFQ, um, both RFQs, you know, read them in detail. And if you do have questions, um, feel free to contact us. Yes, yes, uh, us. yeah, send us an email and we're happy to help. And uh, this will be posted on the website, on the public art section of our website. So you're welcome to go back and um, review either the slides or the recording. Hmm. And we are, um, last thing I'll note is we are starting a new um, public art specific uh, Google group for email blast. So if you've signed up today, we will probably add you to that. And if uh, you, you know, like getting those emails, um, that's where we'll keep sending announcements around the public art across Maryland program. Quick question for the courthouse. Would you like us to specify the lobby wall or second floor wall in our letters of interest? Yes, please let us know if you prefer one of those. Uh, I think if we don't hear from you, we will be selecting you know, a group of semi-finalists for that and a group of semi-finalists for, for one and the other. But if you prefer one or the other, please let us know. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and um, have a great rest of the afternoon, and uh, nice to see so many familiar faces. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.